Hello everyone and welcome to our second video in cycloalkanes. Uh, this video is going to focus on one cycloalkane, specifically that's cyclohexane. We're going to talk about the conformations that cyclohexane exists in, how those conformations uh, are interconverted, the energies associated with that interconversion, and some of the names associated with specific positions on cycloalkanes, or cyclohexane specifically. All right, so to begin with, let's take take a look at a model of cyclohexane. So I've labeled one of the atoms because we'll be talking about how to rotate and uh, manipulate this molecule. So I wanted to, to label one of them so you can keep track of it. Uh, but for right now, assume these are all carbons. Uh, so this is a front on view of our six membered ring. If we take it and just bring it forward, we can see that again, all of the bond angles are around 109 and the dihedrals reach 60 degrees, so it's a staggered conformation for every one of the carbon-carbon um, bonds. Uh, so this molecule has zero ring strain, as we talked about in our previous video. So if we take another look at this, right, so back to the top, and go to the side view, We can see that this takes a down, up, down, up view. Right, so this carbon pointing down attaches to two carbons pointing up. These come down. This goes back up. This conformation is known as a chair. Uh, it's one of two chair conformations associated with cyclohexane. And these are the two most prevalent conformations of cyclohexane. And we're going to take some time talking about these, how to draw them. Uh, you can see that kind of right here. This is a representation of what we have looked at as a side view uh, in our model here. So we're going to talk about how to draw these models correctly um, so that you can identify specific points on a cyclohexane um, in its chair conformation, and then we'll talk about how to interconvert between two chairs. Uh, Okay, so to draw a chair conformation, you'll notice from the molecule drawn here that there are essentially three sets of parallel lines. There's this line here, which is parallel to this line here. There's this line here is parallel to this line here, and that's the, okay. This line here, which is parallel to this line here. So it's three sets of parallel lines. Now hopefully I can draw those better than I do in tracing them. But to go about drawing a cyclohexane, you want to draw in the two sets of parallel, or the two parallel lines together, and just work to, around through all three sets. So. For this one, we start with one here, one here, one here, hold that up on the other side, and then connect the two lines. So ideally you're doing this with something that's a, a little easier to draw with. I haven't gotten this perfected with a stylus yet. So that's one of the two confirmations of our cycloalkane. You'll notice that we now have three carbons pointing down, this one's pointing down, this one's pointing down, this one's pointing down, and then we have three carbons pointing up, this one's pointing up, pointing up, and pointing up. Very similar to what we have here, right? So if we take a look at this, this one's pointing down, this one's pointing down, and this one's pointing down. And these three are pointing up. Um, we'll come back to this when we start talking about the positions of the hydrogens on this molecule, but that's one confirmation of it here. So the other chair confirmation has the carbon that we've labeled in pink here pointing up, then the carbons come down, up, and then down. So we were to draw this
it's not quite long enough. Should look something like that. All right. So notice that these two are two different forms of the same molecule. These are two conformations. Now, these two interconvert. You can go between the two of them. And this is called a ring flip. So Now, this is a, a terminology that sometimes gets confusing because what we don't mean by ring flip is essentially flipping the ring over. What we do mean is rotating the bonds. Uh, and I'm going to post a link to a nice molecular dynamic simulation that shows you how these two interconvert and we'll go through the potential energy surface of it here shortly. But what I don't mean is notice how here the pink atom is up and here it is down, right? That means that in order to do a ring flip, we're gonna move this up and move this down. What we are not going to do is take this molecule and rotate it 180 degrees. So you're not just taking it and flipping it over, right? Because notice now that the pink one is still up and all the one on the opposite side is still down. So it's not just flipping the molecule over. You're going to move one atom up, move the other one down. All right, and I'll post something about that and you'll see this a lot more in the next few videos when we go over substituted systems. So how do we interconvert between these two models? Um, well, that comes into, and I'll take a uh, image from Klein to show you this, uh, numerous conformations. So we're going to just zoom in on this. All right, so we start from one chair here, and then we raise one of these up. to get to a half chair. So all five of these are now in the same plane. From there, we start to raise this up a little further and then this drop this one down and that leads to a twist boat confirmation. So a twist boat doesn't have, or a twist boat allows you to keep the dihedrals from reaching um, essentially zero. Uh, so you relieve some of the uh, torsional strain in the molecule, but it starts to have interactions shown here where you start to have interactions through space. And you start to have shorter dihedral angles. So this molecule you'll notice is 23 kilocalories higher than the chair conformation. So there's slight interactions here. There's more interactions from the twisting of this molecule. And then you reach a boat conformation. So the boat conformation has these two hydrogens pointed directly towards each other. Uh, and that's known as a flagpole interaction. So again, a large steric clash between those two. And you'll see in later videos, if you put something other than a hydrogen there, there this energy becomes much higher. Uh, the flagpole interaction and the eclipsing of the hydrogens on the carbons here make this a fairly high energy state and a transition state between the two twist boats. So the barrier to interconvert between the two twist boats uh, is 30 kilojoules per mole, and that's all relative to our chair conformation. From that twist boat, we can go back to another half chair where we've now lowered this carbon down, and then if we keep dropping that down, we get to our other chair conformation. Right, so this is how you interconvert between one chair and the other. It goes through all of these conformations. Um, things to notice, the half chairs and the boat as drawn 
are all transition states. Um, so these are high energy states that exist for very small amounts of time. Uh, the twist boats are minima and the chairs are much lower in energy than anything else. So the reason that we concern ourselves with the half chair, the twist boat, and the boat are to get an idea of what kind of energy is required to interconvert between the chair conformations. Because the chair conformations are the ones that we are going to see most often in, uh, well, more the ones we're going to see most often. So based on this potential energy surface, and the energetics of this, more than 99% of the molecules uh, in cyclohexane will exist in a chair conformation at any given time. Um, so other important things to re recognize about chair conformations, right? So one, keep in mind that you have to interconvert them, right? It's not just flipping the chair over. That's very important. Um, try building with your model one chair and follow this diagram and kind of build it and see how you interconvert between one and the other. And the reason that we want to draw these out, and this is again where I encourage you to please be taking notes, draw this on a piece of paper because you are gonna to need to learn how to draw a chair conformation. You're gonna to need to learn to draw it well. Um, part of the reason for that is there are are interactions in these that we will go through when we get to substituted systems. So if we look at our chair conformation, all right, and we'll do this kind of along with our structure so that we can get an idea of what this might look like if you're building a ball and stick model of it. All right, notice that on the carbons that are pointing up, this one, oh, let's just get to there. This one, this one, and this one. We have a hydrogen that is pointing directly up. And the ones that are pointing down have a hydrogen that is pointing directly down from the plane. So we draw this so these are the hydrogens pointing directly up from the carbons that are pointing up those are the ones that are pointing down uh, I'm going to circle, well, I'll just use the highlighter, highlight these in yellow. These are our axial hydrogens. So every carbon has an axial hydrogen. The other carbons you'll notice follow along kind of the equator or the center of our molecule. So if we look at this, it's kind of a plane here. The rest of the hydrogens kind of stay in that plane. So we can draw these. Notice that if we start at the end, this hydrogen, this bond here is parallel to this bond here shown here. All right. You can draw these in this way. And finally, this bond, this hydrogen, will be a parallel line to this one here. Right? So that is what you should be able to draw. You should be able to draw all of the axial hydrogens and all of the equatorial hydrogens in a way that we can determine which ones are axial and equatorial. Right? So if we 
label these, let's say, in blue. All right, so if we were to do a ring flip, so one, take a second, see if what you drew on your page looks like this. It definitely should. Uh, things that it shouldn't look like. That, the Budweiser symbol, anything like that, those are bad. All right, these are, no, don't draw those. I don't ever want to see those. Um, other things that will get you into trouble is that hydrogen there. I have no idea where that hydrogen sits. I don't know if that's axial or equatorial. It's neither. So don't draw it that way. Okay. You should be able to draw it so that you can clearly see up and down and then everything else sitting on a parallel line to one of the lines you have drawn in an equatorial position. Why this becomes important, and we'll get into substituents in the next video, but if you are to do a ring flip, right? So in this case, not my best, but There are your axial hydrogens. There are your equatorial hydrogens. All right, so when we do the ring flip, everything that was equatorial, right, so if this is this carbon, this is now that carbon, and this hydrogen that was here is now up here. All right. So every hydrogen that was equatorial has now become axial. And as we've lifted this up, the hydrogens that were axial have now become equatorial. So here, as we've done the ring flip, our hydrogens that were axial before and you should be able to see this pretty readily if you build the molecule and flip it, maybe label one of your hydrogens. All right, so being able to draw these and interconvert the two and make sure that you know that the hydrogens that were axial become equatorial and the ones that were equatorial become axial when you do the ring flip um, is going to be important as we move forward and talk about substituents. All right, uh, our next video will be on uh, substituted cyclohexanes.